Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about tick paralysis in detail. We'll cover pathogenesis behind tick paralysis. I'll introduce you to tick and different species of tick responsible for causing tick paralysis along with other tick-borne diseases. I've recently made a video on ectoparasites including tick. If you've missed that, be sure to check it out. Its link is in the description. So let's jump right into the video. Tick. Ticks are small arachnids and these belong to superorder parasitiforms and the order Ixodida. They are responsible for causing tick paralysis, not only tick paralysis but there are other diseases like ehrlichiosis and so on and so forth, we'll talk about that. And they're often associated with summer hikes, camping trips and outdoor adventures. Lecture outline, as I've introduced you to the tick. Now we'll be looking at tick paralysis, I'll introduce you to this, then we'll look at its pathogenesis, we'll uncover its signs and symptoms, we'll locate it on human body where it actually bites and is responsible for causing paralysis and we'll also look at its treatment, prevention and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Tick paralysis. It is a tick-borne non-infectious neurologic syndrome and is characterized by acute ataxia progressing to ascending paralysis. Ataxia is the group of disorders that affect coordination, balance, and speed. It is caused by salivary neurotoxin released by several tick species and is often confused with Guillain-Barré syndrome. Let's uncover the pathogenesis behind tick paralysis. Tick attaches to its host, the human beings, and begins feeding. As you can see in this picture, the swollen tick, it has taken a lot of blood milk. It then secretes a neurotoxin in its saliva that is a potent neurotoxin and that interferes with the normal functioning of nerve cells, the neurons, and affects the transmission of nerve signals. Let me tell you how. After the tick bite, the toxin spreads throughout the bloodstream and it reaches the nerve endings. Paralysis is mediated by a neurotoxin that blocks the release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. This action is similar to that of botulinum toxin and this toxin is, as I mentioned earlier, is made in the salivary gland of the tick. This can take up to two to seven days. Result is a disruption in the communication between nerves and muscles. This interference leads to muscle weakness starting in lower extremities and gradually progressing upwards. Untreated paralysis can affect respiratory muscles, lead to difficulty breathing, like we can say respiratory failure can occur, and it causes potentially life-threatening complications. As you can see that this patient is suffering from these complications. Signs and symptoms. These appear in two to seven days and include numbness, tingling, ophthalmoplegia, that is the paralysis or weakness of the eye muscles, bulbar palsy, we can also call it bulbar weakness, that refers to bilateral impairment of function of low cranial nerves, the 9, 10, 11 and 12th. Ataxia is an early presenting symptom. The paralysis is symmetrical and can ascend from legs to the head within several hours. Respiratory failure and death can occur. Locations on human body. Scalp, hairline, ear canals or around ear, armpits, behind knees, umbilicus of the belly button, body hair, waist and pubic region. There are many tick species discovered in the globe, but we are concerned with only those that are responsible for causing tick paralysis. These include American dog tick, lone star tick, paralysis tick, the deer tick, brown dog tick. Let's talk about American dog tick first. It is also known as dermocenter variables. This tick species is infamous for transmitting Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and tick paralysis. Its feeding habits can result in paralysis, weakness and respiratory distress. As you can see there, it has got this dark brown body with this white spot on the front. Next up is Lone Star Tick. It is also called as Ambilioma Americanum. These ticks are recognized by a distinctive white spot on the back of their adult females. As you can see in this picture, 
this female has got a white spot on its back and the male has got some sort of star-like appearance that's why these are called lone star ticks while they're primarily known for transmitting diseases like ehrlichiosis, tularemia and tick paralysis. The third one is paralysis tick. Paralysis tick, also called as Ixodes holocyclus. This formidable foe injects a neurotoxin into its host, the human being, and is responsible for causing muscle weakness, paralysis, and death. So you can see this is the paralysis tick. This is the common one. You might have seen that around you. Next one is deer tick. It is also called an Ixodes capillaris. It transmits Lyme disease and is also responsible for causing tick paralysis. This tiny tick can go unnoticed until symptoms begin to manifest. Here you can see this one. The last one in the list is brown dog tick. It is also called as Ripicephalus sanguineus. It is adapted to live mainly in human-made environments such as kennels and homes. It is responsible for causing paralysis but it's not that much common. Here is its adult male and here is its adult female. Treatment involves removal of the tick. Recovery occurs within 24 hours of the removal of tick. Tick can be removed with the help of tweezers, as you can see there, if tick is attached firmly. Apply the pressure on the tweezer and remove the tick. Prevention Tick bites can be prevented by application of insect repellents and wearing cloths. That cover the extremities like wearing full cloths. Let's show you everything really quick. Ticks are small arachnids belonging to order parasitiforms. That's the super order. Tick paralysis is a tick-borne disease causing numbness, tingling, ataxia, paralysis, difficulty breathing, and death. Many tick species are responsible for causing tick paralysis that include American dog tick, lone star tick, paralysis tick, the deer tick, and brown dog tick. Treatment is the prompt removal of tick and prevention involves insect repellents and full clothing. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave your suggestions in the comments below and if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram where I upload amazing infographics. For example, I've got resources posts for ophthalmology and I do have a blog site. I'll catch you soon. Till then, assalamu alaikum.